Hi everybody, I'm Erin. Um, I'm here with Jen today to tell you a little bit about the Cultural Data Project. I'll tell you about um, how we started, what we do, and Jen will answer any difficult questions about technology or data analysis, if that seems fair. Um, so the CDP started in Pennsylvania, actually, in 2001. Our origin story is that six funders um, got together and thought about coordinating and consolidating their data collection efforts. So uh, if any of you has worked for a nonprofit or works for a nonprofit today, you know that you get your money, uh, some of your money, and sometimes much of your money, through grant applications and funding at private foundations, pu public grant makers. Uh, so these guys were all collecting data in different ways. Some had spreadsheets, some had online applications, some had paper applications, and they got together and decided that they could reduce the burden on arts and cultural organizations and get consistent, better data if they coordinated their collection efforts. And so it took about three years um, $4 million to build the Cultural Data Project. Two years ago, we left the Pew Charitable Trusts and became an independent organization. Uh, and today, we are collecting data, mostly financial data, but some quantitative programmatic data, from 11,522 or so arts and cultural organizations across the country. So we started in Pennsylvania, but now we're in 14 states and the District of Columbia. Um, I want to do a little show of hands here. If uh, everybody who's attended, uh, say, a jazz performance or a theater performance or a zoo in the last year, put your hand up. Any other cultural thing. Uh, how about in the last five years? Can I get all the hands in the room <laughs> up in the air? Fantastic. You guys are all in our data set. So all of the organizations that you've attended are entering their data into the Cultural Data Project. And so. The data that we're talking about today, um, I hear you guys think mostly about Philadelphia. I stretched to the greater Philadelphia region, so we're talking about the five counties here. Um, we're collecting data now from 687 cultural organizations in the five county region. Uh, this is primarily uh, fiscal year data, so every year they annually enter information into the CDP. Um, we've got 12 years of data. We have data in Pennsylvania going back to 2002 fiscal year. Um, because our data profile, which is what we call the survey that we collect data with, uh, has 1,250 data points in it, roughly, we've actually got about 5.5 million data points now. So unlike some of the transactional data that you think about when you think about big data, like credit card data, which is you know a couple of fields and very, very, very broad, we have 687 organizations, but we have very deep data on those organizations, and it's longitudinal. The set hasn't changed, the questions haven't changed in the 12 years that we've been collecting data. Um, so that's, that's what we collect. The organizations themselves can then use the data that they've input. Our system allows them to generate a series of reports. They have an instant annual report, things like that, so that they can actually look at the longitudinal data that they've entered. It would be a real shame to spend all that time inputting data for a grant application and then never to use it again. And so we provide a number of reports now, and that's an area where we're becoming more robust. We're really thinking about um, what can we do to build a bridge between organizations who've entered data and organizations actually gaining insight from the information that they've been put into the system. So how can we do that? Um, the other thing that our data is used for is research. Uh, so we give this out to academic institutions. Uh, we provide this to researchers who might be looking at a very particular question or problem, and it's also used for advocacy. It's been used a lot in the Philadelphia area, particularly for advocacy. Does anyone remember when they wanted to charge a tax on every arts and cultural organization's tickets, right? 2008, 2009, this was a big kerfuffle in the city. It was a big deal in Pennsylvania. It's how they were going to close a budget gap of something like $100 million, I think, was there, what they, what they thought they would bring in. CDP was around at that time. Uh, they used our data, we have all of Pennsylvania, so they used our data to really look at what the potential revenue was from a tax like that, and it was something like $14 million. And so the gap between what they projected bringing in and what they could actually ever potentially bring in was so great that we were able to use this data to advocate to take that bill off the table in Harrisburg. So it can really be used powerfully, and that's one of our big um, Pennsylvania success stories. What did I miss, Jen? Yeah, feels good. That feels good. What's our time? Yeah. Eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. 
Um, so I know that we, I'm going to take this eight seconds. Jen came here with a question we're particularly thinking right now about how we can collect data, not from the organizations themselves, but from their audiences. Audience demographic data, demographic in a broad number of areas, um, is something that, that arts and cultural organizations really don't have the, the kind of skills or tools or time or money to collect. And so we're trying to figure out how do we jump that and collect data from the attendees themselves. And so we come with that question to all yeah. of you. It's, um, it's, it can be, very, it's a sensitive thing, right? It's demographic, personal demographic self-identifying data. And um, depending on audience, um, that can be collected in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, we are looking for ideas of how to collect that in a respectful way, um, but also, you know, experiences you've had in collecting demographic data of audiences. Um, so whether that's through, I mean, we, you know, we don't know. Is it a mobile app? Is it, you know, a mobile website? Is it um, some kind of poll? Um, it, it would be anonymous. That is the idea. Um, and then how do we how provide it back to the organizations correct. in a way that they can use it to learn what their audience looks like? Are they connecting with their audience? What is the, you know, what, what is the age, race, ethnicity? What, who's coming uh, to your shows or to your events? And, and do you, are you doing the thing that you think you're doing? having the success that you think you're having. So um, that's so those our... those were some long eight seconds, but... <laughs>